You probably feel overwhelmed trying to keep all of your alerts, overlays, and music organized in OBS. Remember when you got a big raid, but your alerts weren't set up on the right scenes and the viewer couldn't hear your backingtrack.gg music playlist? The good news is that there is a new plugin for OBS that ensures that you never have to go through that again. It lets you add all of your overlays, your music sources, whatever you want, on top of your entire stream on its own super simple to manage layer. Professional broadcasts and TV have had this for decades now, and it's finally at your fingertips in OBS Studio. I'm Eupos Fox, the stream professor, and I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about the OBS downstream keyer plugin from Exceldro. A DSK or downstream keyer is a set of graphics, or in this case, also audio, that go on top of everything else in your stream feed as a final step, as a final you know downstream layer that goes on top of it. Think of it like a massive adjustment layer in a video editor on top of the entire timeline. An example of this in action would be a big channel lower third bug on a TV show where it has the, you know, like the CBS logo or something at the bottom. Step one, download and install it. Guide to doing so is linked in the description if you need it. Launch OBS. Go to Docs and Downstream Keyer. You should go ahead and plop this new window somewhere in your OBS layout with a good amount of space, like over here above my chat. You'll need some room for activities. Quickly covering the layout, you have tabs at the top for different downstream keyers you can use. Yes, you can have multiple downstream keyers with multiple sources in them. And then you have plus and minus buttons, of course, to add the different sources, arrows to change their layer order, pause buttons to hide them, lock buttons to keep them from being changed, and a settings cog to allow you to add, rename, remove, and adjust the show and hide transitions for your individual sources. As with most things in OBS, the things you add to the keyer has to come from existing scenes. So for organization's sake, I recommend just making a naming scheme just for these overlay scenes. I just like adding dashes onto the layer names. So if you want a lower third that shows up on top of everything, just make a dash dash lower third scene. If you want a music bed to go on top of everything, make a dash dash music scene for your VLC music source playlist and then add whatever source you want to add there. So I've got these are video files, but close enough. <laughs> Go to the scene that you want to add to the downstream keyer, click the plus in the DSK box, and it adds it to the list. Then when you're looking at another scene, if you click on it in the list, it shows it. You can only have one active scene per downstream keyer tab at a time. So for example, if I go over here and add this desktop scene to the downstream keyer, and then I go to another scene, if I click music, it shows the BRB scene. If I click desktop, it shows that. But I can only do one or another, one or the other per specific DSK tab. But you can have multiple downstream keyer tabs active at the same time. So if I go over here and add a downstream keyer, I can say DSK2. And then I can add that desktop scene to DSK2. And then that will be over top of everything. And just keep in mind that the further right you go in this tab list, the higher up you go in the layer order. So anything in DSK2 will show up on top of DSK1 and then on top of everything else. The reason then to add multiple sources to a single downstream keyer tab is to transition between them. This is especially useful for different lower thirds where you have different host names or the like that you want to cycle between. Now that I've helped quell that feeling of being overwhelmed with managing, you know, your scenes and your sources and your overlays, you might be looking to learn something more about streaming or content creation. And for that, I have a lot of awesome exclusive content up on Nebula. I've got interviews with creators of cool products like Mike Chi and other creators. I've got a full dive to follow up on earlier this week's video uh, going through my family video archives and the nostalgia there. I've got my 3D printing and maker quest videos going on. All of that is on Nebula, which is my own video streaming site I've built with my creator friends. My videos are higher quality there, they're ad-free, and they're either extended or have lots of extra exclusive videos up there for you to watch and learn more from. Curiosity Stream saw what we were doing with Nebula and wanted to partner up to form and you know, a, a, a video power bundle, so to speak. So you can actually get both sites for the price of one. Uh, Curiosity Stream has a library of thousands of documentary and entertaining content including capturing a black hole in the Milky Way, which shows how astronomers across the globe have basically linked up their telescopes and all of their radios so that they can create one giant telescope camera to photograph black holes out in the galaxy, which is pretty wild. Uh, if you sign up with the link below, you get access to both sites 
through this bundle for under $15 per year. That's 26% off their annual plan. Head to curiositystream.com slash ebos and start watching today. Clicking on a source in the downstream keyer activates it. Clicking pause on the pause button transitions it off. Clicking between two different sources on a downstream keyer transitions between them. Again, use the show hide transitions here in the settings cog to change how they appear and disappear. However, if there is a transition you want to use that's not on this list, you first have to add it in the normal scene transitions menu here. So for example, I will add swipe. I'm going to call this swipe. This is going to be, yep, swipe left. That kind of, that doesn't really make sense. Swipe right, I guess. That's fine. And then you go over here to the scene transition menu, show, swipe, hide. Ooh, we can do a second swipe. Add swipe. That one will be left. Hide transition, swipe two. Show transition, swipe, hide transition, swipe two. Okay, so that applies to the whole thing. You can't necessarily apply that per different individual source in your downstream gear, but I'm sure if I point it out, Excedro can add it later because he's magic and continues to do that. So now if you click on a source, it's gonna wipe on with that. If you click pause, it's gonna wipe off. If you can click on, it wipes, pause, it wipes off. My only complaint here is switching between them does not appear to do the transitions, so you have to manually do the pause and the pause, but you can also set just a general transition that will do that. So you have some flexibility. You could probably do more. Excelder could probably add more. It's just probably added bloat. That is something you got to manage and keep up with. I use this for my alerts, my music, and little things like that, and easy means of consistent scene management. And it's an upgrade to scene nesting without having to add the scenes to every scene and then remember which ones you turned it off on. It, it, it's really handy. Given that the second word in this entire concept is called keyer, it's traditionally used with additional chroma or color keying effects within graphics or cameras or whatever as well, which unlocks a whole new layer of possibilities if you wanted to go that far. Go forth, show me the cool stuff that you make with this. I want to see more creative streaming setups. Post them in our Discord, tag me on Twitter. However you want to get there, I just want to see it. My own stream is linked below. And most of all, remember, be kind, rewind.